are looking rough, yo. You're in pajama <laughs> pants. What do you mean we're looking rough? My makeup is gone. I have like a zit in the middle of my mouth. It's Christmas night. It's been a long day. It's true. So welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 94. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 65 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics, and every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So yeah, it is Christmas night. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I don't know what we're doing filming a video right now. We just apologize right now for whatever shenanigans like are about to unfold because we're tired. Yeah. That's what happened. It was a long day. Rachel's been up since like 5 a.m. I will go up right after her. She went and helped her mom. Me, I started playing with one of my Christmas presents all morning. Yes, you did. I got another FPV drum, but I got some really cool footage that we're gonna play for you guys. It's really cool, and it's, the fun part was is that, like, I put the goggles on our nephews yes. and let them see what you see, because it's one thing to see the footage like when you're watching it on television. It's another thing to have these glasses and be on in it, like and a virtual reality. You lose like your orientation. Like our, our one like, nephew was like, "Whoa!" Because you feel like you're inside of the plane. Yeah. So that's what I did while Rachel went and helped her mom and everything, but. Time well spent. Well spent. It was an awesome day. Caleb got Rachel the perfect, perfect present. You're not allowed to get mad. Oh no, what is it? It's a diamond ring! That's too big to fit a ring. If it was a ring, it would be like this big. And there's no receipt. What'd you get? You don't have a receipt. I threw it away. What'd you get her? Oh, dear God, I'm afraid. Frog! Baby Yoda! What is it? What'd you get her? Crown Royal. Yeah, right. What did you get Liquor. her? What'd you oh, get her? I'm You'll see. Kill it. If it was a big gift, you should have told me to hold it. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I know. I, was, I know which one to get. <laughs> the suspense is killing me! <laughs> it takes so long to open! Save the boxes, I know. Bro, it's wrapped again. Oh, goody, you got a sock. Oh, goody, you got a sock. Oh, goody, you got a sock. He cut his toe off. What do you say? It's a bear. It's a bear's head. So I guess we should probably explain why that was such a funny Christmas present. Yes. So this whole year, our community has asked us to set out teddy bears mm -hmm. like around the outside of our homes because kids could kind of do a scavenger hunt for teddy bears while they're exercising. They're maybe going on their bikes with their parents, social distancing, but like getting outdoors. Right. And they can look for all of these teddy bears. We had a windstorm one day, and my teddy bear lost his body. It was just a He head. was decapitated. He was decapitated, and his head was just there. And for some reason, we didn't bring it inside. We left it on our flagpole for like a really inappropriate amount of time. Sounds like us. Finally, it fell off and got into the mud and got all dirty, and we still did not pick it up. The boys would move it when they mowed the lawn, but still leave this like head of a teddy bear all dirty and creepy in our yard. So next up 
Caleb started putting it in places where I would happen upon it because now it's super creepy. Right. So he would put it on my car as I go to work or right at the front door when I would reach for my mail. It sat at the front door for like a week. Like every time you went to get the mail, there's a decapitated bear head sitting on the mailbox. Totally creeped me out. So one day I put it on his car and it happened to be a day that he was leaving for early morning prayer. So it was really dark outside and he didn't even get scared by it he just drove off and it like fell into the street now it's in the street he harvested it from the street to put it in that christmas present it was for awesome. me and i thought i was getting you know something fancy he made me scared the setup was like she thought she was getting like a diamond ring or something I was, and i was like i didn't wasn't in on this so i'm seriously sitting there going did he just get her a better present than i did like i'm gonna kill this kid i gotta tell you i was relieved it was a bear i hate when the babes like buy me a present Although Anthony did buy me a totally rad that thing is awesome backpack from Nightmare Before Christmas, and I'm so excited to use my new backpack. But yeah, glad it wasn't a diamond ring, but I couldn't help but laugh. But overall, it was a really good day, and I just realized something. Yes, this is the last keto on the couch for 2020. Is it? It is the last yeah. keto on the couch. The next keto on the couch. We'll tape it in this we'll, year. No, it won't because we'll be taping it probably either on Friday or <gasps> Saturday. That's true. So we will be taping it on either New Year's Day or January 2nd. By 2020. So, See yeah. See you later, alligator. Yeah, I, I'm kind of happy that 2020 is over. And you're like, but yeah, this is the very last one. And one of the things that we're going to be doing starting off the new year is we always start off the entire month of january as a fast for god kind of like just giving him the beginning yeah. of the year and we definitely need to do that this year but we're also going to be participating in the keto chow reset seven day reset which is starting on january 4th now you can start earlier yep but it is starting on january 4th and it's not too late if you want to get your seven day reset we did have the video up of like everything that's in it but i do have it here and i kind of wanted to show just in case you didn't see that video so there's like a downloadable ebook with recipes and stuff so and awesome. like exercises then you get all of these individual packs look at this and what a delicious way to start the new year you get a keto chow bottle fun and you get some cool Swag. Swag. I love swag. Get a keto chow towel. I have never had a keto chow towel. And you get this. <laughs> you look like Olivia Newton-John. Oh, and we get some electrolyte drops because we're going to be doing some working out. And we're going to actually do the working out part, right? We are totally going to do the working out part. So that's definitely something. And we can save the keto chow for later in the year because we use keto chow all year long. Yeah, and because what we're gonna, for the entire month, that's what we're doing. We're doing keto chow. Uh, we're gonna start off, we won't be doing the food part, we're just gonna do the keto chow part. For, yeah. But we love you guys to join us along in any kind of restart for the new year. Um, also, I wanted to mention along with the keto chow, this week's flavor of the week is really good it's actually better than our coupon usually i say hey you know what every week is a flavor of the week if you use our coupon you it? automatically get 10 percent off but this week's flavor of the week is 20 percent off all of the individual packs nice that aren't seasonal aren't the like limited edition flavors like apple pie so it doesn't work on apple pie okay it doesn't work on s'mores and what is the other one? It doesn't work on pistachio. All right, but there's lots, obviously, but look at this. Mint and chocolate. You can get that. Snickerdoodle. Still use our coupon code. Mm -hmm. You'll get 20% off of that. And if you really want pistachio, you can get pistachio in the big bag. How fun. And then you'll get 10% off using our coupon, or not our coupon, but our link. And the link supports the channel. And then you also get Rachel saying to you. Butter is better. Butter is better. Butter is better. So, so yeah, that's the flavor of the week. 20% off of all the individuals. So if you like buying the individual packs, like camping, or if you just want to take it take different it places, um, you want to try out a flavor, this is the week to do it with 20% off. Now, our link doesn't stack on top of that, but 
Again, you can use our link to get other flavors in the big bags and all of that kind of stuff. Nice. And then what else do we have going on? We're getting ready to go on a trip to the Florida RV show. That Tampa. is January 16th. So if you're in the Florida area, we're going to be there say howdy. for four days or five days. I don't even remember, but it's, it's like the whole time we're going to be there. We're going to be camping in the parking lot of the fairgrounds. <laughs> so we'd love for if you're in the area. Come say hello. Come check out some other RVs and stuff like that. We're going to be wandering around and I, having a good time. I cannot promise Our you. Our first like official, non-official meetup. I cannot promise you that I will not hug someone. Really? Yeah. But it's COVID. I know, but I'm going to want to hug you. So like say don't be don't like this. Me. Don't hug me if you don't want to hug. Really? Yeah. So, I know. It's, it, it is COVID. The good thing is, is that you don't have to wear your mask the entire time at the fairgrounds. You have to wear it in the RVs and then okay. when you're in the buildings. But Makes sense. If we're just walking around the fairgrounds and stuff like that, you don't have yeah. to wear them. So everybody is I've always up got to mine. whatever they want to do. So right, I've got the chin diaper you want, on. If you want the hug mask, like we can wear a mask and then kind of hug whatever you want to do. But yeah, if you're in the area, come join us. I will be willing to wear a rubber suit over me so that I can get a hug. I will do that. Now we are getting ready to, one of the reasons we're filming this Friday night on Christmas night is because tomorrow morning, we're heading out for right. five days of camping with the boys. That's our Christmas present from the boys to us is, that's what we say. I said, that's what I want for my 50th together. birthday. That's what Rachel wanted for Christmas is like, we want some family time together. We do. So we're going to spend five days camping with them. So are we uh, coming back alive? I that's don't a lot of know family time. if there is going to be a live stream on Thursday because we, there probably will. Oh, we are. We are going to be able to live stream because we're coming home on Thursday. Yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. In the morning. We're coming home in the morning. It's a three hour drive. So... Unless some major traffic jam or something like that, we will be having a live stream. And we've got a couple of other videos, including while we're camping, we're going to be doing Fear Factor, episode number 10. Family edition. Family edition. And this one's really cool because we have a wheel of fortune. Or misfortune. A wheel of misfortune. So we're going to spin the wheel. And then whatever it lands on is what we have to eat. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and make sure you're hitting that little bell button so that you're notified for when that video comes up because that's going to, I think, be the best Fear Factor because you're going to have Anthony and Caleb eating keto Fear Factor foods. Yeah, because not only whenever we spin do we have to eat, they have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So... Overall, the Christmas was really good. We had an excellent Christmas meal. We started off our day with some of the um, sausage pumpkin soup, which we had never using made. The keto chow, sp uh, spicy pumpkin, uh, spice pumpkin, caramel pumpkin. Where has that been all my life? That was amazing. We had a biscuits and gravy using the keto chow recipe for drop the, biscuits. And thanks to everybody in the Two Crazy Ketos family who submitted recipes for mom to use for, for the, the sausage gravy. gravy. Yeah. And then we had bacon and we had ham, no eggs. Can you believe we had no eggs and nobody no complained? Eggs. It was it was a meat morning with the exception of the biscuits. It was like this is meaty Monday for Heath. Yeah. It, it was it was a meaty Christmas. Yep. And then for lunch we had chicken and we had ribs and there were some burgers. I mean it was just a delicious day. Nothing fancy. But no. it's kind of awesome when everybody in the house is keto, other than Anthony and Caleb, and the keto food is so delicious, they're like, I'm completely fine with this. They don't mind it at all. Yeah. Because, I mean, all the things that they would be like, wow, this is really nice, like ribs. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to go to like a fancy place, you know, get yourself some ribs. Or the grilled chicken that my mom makes is like really delicious. She seasons it so well. So it was like, yeah, yeah. they were super happy. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's take a quick commercial break, and then we can come back with our subscriber of the week, our comments from last week, and of course, our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. And we're back. <laughs> okay, so let's get started with this week's Adjunct Professor of the Week, and it is Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie said, as we go into the new year, if you're having struggles with keto carnivore, ketovore, or anything in life, remember, fact, you cannot continue to do the same thing 
and expect different results. That is so, so true. And I love that being at the forefront of our mind as we head into a new year. That is like really inspirational. Yeah. Thank you very much for putting that up because it really, you know, helps us to remember that like, yeah, you know, if we want different results, we have to be willing to do something different. So yeah, sometimes these things are gonna be a little bit struggling and we're gonna be thinking about like, oh, I kinda wish it was this way, but if you wanna change, you've gotta do something to actually make that change happen. That's so true. So, uh, Let's get into this week's subscriber of the week and it is Rocky. Hey, Rocky Keto. Guys, we should all make a habit of looking back. Sometimes in my head, nothing has changed. But even in this crazy year, I feel differently. I'm so thankful for Keto and this amazing community. By the way, been cutting my own hair since February. Non-scale victory for sure. Merry Christmas, Keto loves. Look at how awesome. Look at that. What a you, she barely looks like the same person. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And um, I wish I could cut my hair <laughs> that perfectly. Can you imagine I if know. you gave me the scissors no. and like, I, I've seen what happens when you decide I'm going to cut my bangs. Just Which, my bangs. by the way, I have to say, aside from the fact that I love this hair color. Well, thank you. I am super proud of you that you have not cut your bangs. Well, I don't really want to screw up with what, what the lady did. It just, it looks awesome. It's a great style. The color looks good. But I'm telling you, if I could cut my hair like that, I'd be, I'd be cutting don't. it every week. Please don't. It looks gorgeous. You ready to get in the comments? Yes, please. Okay. So the first one is from Mary Jo. Hey, Mary Jo. She said, I had to copy and paste this for Jo from the 1223 Minneapolis Star Tribune, Die Hard 1988. Oh, wow. It's Christmas Eve, so yes, there is some tinsel hanging about, but I never thought of Die Hard as a holiday movie until a very Die Hard Christmas at the Bryant Lake Bowl brought me around. Josh Carson, who takes on Bruce Willis' role in the BLB stage version, makes wow. a convincing case that Die Hard is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, I'll Be Home for Christmas, and It's a Wonderful Life, all rolled into one movie. You know that is totally true. It is totally true. That and I happen to like all three of those movies, which maybe that's why I like Die Hard. Yeah, because the, the storylines are coming out. You don't even realize what you're getting. Because Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Although Christmas I watch movie. it all year long. A lot of Christmas movies I don't watch until Christmas time, but that one I watch all year. yippee ki yay <laughs> Okay. We'll end it there. Don't say the rest. I won't. Next one is from Renee. Hey Renee, she said, for a second I thought Rachel had shaved the side of her head like mine. Super cute hair and outfit today and your eye makeup looks fab. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I am not as cool as Renee, but yeah, one day I'm going to totally like work up the guts to have that because it looks so cool. I like it on some people. Along with her new tattoo. Yeah, I love the new tattoo. That thing looks amazing. Awesome. The next one is from Lori. Hey Lori, she says, we're having a co-parenting Christmas Eve meal with my fiance, my daughter's dad, his girlfriend, and my daughter. We will be having prime rib, scallops, garlic, and chive cauliflower mash keto cornbread dressing mm. and a keto dessert, but I haven't decided what yet. Probably pumpkin ch cream cheese balls. Ooh. Balls. <laughs> or I'm about to go snoop around on your website and see if I can find something that sounds delicious. That all sounds delicious, every, honestly. Every single thing sounds delicious, but I'm going to tell you the, the coolest thing about that post is the fact that you guys are getting together yeah. and just like having this combined Christmas and we know what it's like to have a blended family mm -hmm. and I just think that is so beautiful and that's you're making a precious memory for those kids right yeah, like yeah, that's just absolutely. awesome so, great job yeah so we did ask last week what people were eating so we did get a few posts about what they were gonna eat for Christmas I love this uh, Gail said one thing about my keto journey and replacing things I don't think about it tasting like the original thing but does it taste good, period? That's good. As long as it tastes good, it's all right with me. One example is pasta versus cognac noodles. I actually love them. I was eating those kinds of alternatives year be years before I came became keto. Oh, wow. The only thing is, I still do have a sweet tooth. Been keto for four years now. Don't know if that's ever going to go away. Maybe it's hereditary. A little keto sweet makes life worthwhile for me. Well, I'm completely fine with that. Gail. I think that's like, awesome. I, I think that's great, and I think it's good that you know yourself. Mm -hmm. But what I really like is 
the thought, don't compare it, does it taste good? Because that's the bottom line, right? right? Does it taste good? And when my mom was making gravy, this was the first time that she made like a keto, you know, biscuits and gravy right. thing. And I mean, she's a Southern mama. She's been making biscuits and gravy like her whole life. I think right. probably she started as a toddler making it. <laughs> so she said, does this taste the same? Does this taste the same? And I was like, stop, stop thinking that. I, I was, Gail must have been in, in my head. Don't worry about it tasting like it used to taste. Does it taste good now? She's like, oh, it's incredible. It's delicious. I'm like, well, there you go. Right. I think that that's the biggest problem that people have when they get into keto or any way of eating. Yeah. And they try to compare, like, does something that they're having now taste like what they had before? For example, like maybe a keto cookie. Like, I want this chocolate chip cookie to taste exactly like one that I had before. Well, you're going to get disappointed because you're yeah. going to have a different texture. The sweeteners aren't quite the same. It's better to find something that tastes really good and go, I like this and it's a good substitute for what I had before. Instead of being like, I need it to taste like an Oreo. Just find a cookie that you like and say, you know what? This is just as good for me. Yeah. And then you won't have any issues later. Exactly. So, uh, next one is from Deb. Hey, Deb. She says, I will stay keto, but will cook some non-keto dishes for my family. I'm cooking a fresh ham sous vide, deviled eggs, um, green beans that I will eat, and maybe keto child drop biscuits. I'll add potatoes, gravy, pintos, and rolls for everyone else. I'll make keto individual pound cakes for everyone for dessert. I love it. That's a great plan. I will say those keto child drop biscuits, they're a little dangerous. <laughs> so, um, confession time. I made three batches today. All right. So you told me like, hey, we need a lot of them. We need a lot of them. And I made three batches. I don't even know how many. I just like, I didn't measure them out or count. I just like spoon drop, spoon dropped drop, them. spoon drop. All I know is it took 12 eggs and they were all like the eggs we had from the girls and stuff. And Thanks, ladies. Like, yeah. I was trying to go, what can I do with the yolk? Tabitha loved the yolks, by the way. Because we're getting ready to go away, so what's I going to do? I couldn't really save them or anything. So made them. I did eat two, maybe three, on the way from here to your mom's house. It's like a block away. And then you you got them down that. Oh quickly. yeah. And then I think I had like three of them with my sausage pumpkin soup. And oh, then yeah, I knew that they again. were going to disappear. So I hid like four of them in the microwave to save and make sure that there were some for dinner, which I was right. They were all gone. Oh, yeah, they were gone. So I think in total I had probably 10 of those things. Like <laughs> there's a reason I don't make them on a regular basis. Wow, they're so good though. And that sausage pumpkin soup that Oh Hello Bakery came up with. Absolutely. I think I had three bowls. I'm really wishing I had some right now because I really want some more of that stuff. There was no more to be had and you made a vat of it, but like the kids It goes a long way. That one recipe it. and we actually when we made it, we um used half the tomatoes. It calls for a whole can of diced tomatoes. I only used half. Yep. And uh, I also only used half of the amount of onion it called because I wanted to cut back the carbs a little bit because it was like six carbs or seven carbs per serving. And at, I didn't, I wouldn't notice that it, it nothing seemed it, like it was It missing. all was like the pumpkin and the, that's what brings all the carbs. It's all vegetables and stuff. Yeah. But I didn't notice that it didn't have any tomatoes. It was delicious. No, it was and incredible. And that one recipe, like I had two or three bowls and you had a couple of bowls and everybody, everybody. had, and there was still some left over until like dinner time. And it just goes a long way. It's very filling. You're thinking like, I need to eat a lot of this. Oh no. But it is filling. Like this much will fill you up oh, with yeah. it. Oh yeah, it so, was delicious. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Kim. Hey Kim. Kim said, I'm serving ham, keto green bean casserole from the highfalutin low carb recipe and keto chow drop biscuits. I make egg bites for breakfast. I feel like the message here is if you've never tried the keto chow drop biscuits, you want I to. didn't even really pay attention to that as I was putting these comments in here that everybody was making You that. just, you really need the chicken. Isn't that what you yes. use for it? So I don't remember the entire, re it's, it's actually a very simple recipe. So it's a scoop. I'll put a link to it down below. 
but it's a scoop of the chicken, the creamy chicken. It is, or savory creamy chicken is the exact title of it. Um, a half a cup of almond flour. Okay. You mix and some and a teaspoon of baking powder. You mix all that together. Even you can. This is a, so easy. Even, even Rachel, Rachel can, can make a it. recipe. It. Then you're gonna take a couple of tablespoons of butter, cold, and you just kind of knead it with your hands into that. So like you're gonna have little chunks. Some are gonna have butter. Some's not. Oh. And then all you're going to do is get four egg whites. Just the egg white. Now you can use the whole egg, but it's a, the texture is a little bit different. I think it tastes better with just the egg white. Scramble them up and give them to your dog. They love them. Four egg whites. I just gave them to her raw. She loved it. Um, four egg whites. Mix it all together. Drop it onto a pan, just like you were doing cookies. Like scoop up a thing with a spoon and drop it on. Okay. And then bake it in the oven for fifteen to twenty minutes at three fifty. So super easy recipe to make. Takes less than five minutes to actually make everything, and then twenty wow. minutes to bake it. So that's awesome. Yeah, they, but they are delicious. They're so good. Uh, next one is from the Wright family. Hey Wright family, they say we are making meatloaf, deviled eggs, and veggies, and black sheep keto's vanilla cake. There's the other one that everybody has. Deviled mm. eggs. That is like, people say like, I don't know what I should bring to a non-keto household. Deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. Everybody likes deviled eggs. And Hot it luck. is a very deviled keto eggs. meal. Baby shower, deviled, deviled eggs. eggs. Engagement party, deviled eggs. Next one is from Sonia. Hey, Sonia. She said, uh, my husband and I are spending Christmas Eve and day alone and having simple meals like breakfast and steak. The day after Christmas, we are spending with our daughter, son-in-law, and grandchildren. We are having barbecue and deviled, deviled eggs. eggs. Easy and less stressful. The non-keto food I miss most is seafood gumbo. So that, again, if there is like another non-scale victory to mm -hmm. this life, it is how simple the holidays can become if that's what you want. We really enjoyed just hanging out today. Yes, mm -hmm. I went over... And helped my mom, you know, to get like breakfast started. Well, that's because she needs to teach you how to do all the cooking because at some point I'll have to take over. We're gonna have to let her just relax and enjoy Christmas and you take over and let her get to come uh, over and just sit and do nothing. I know that precious woman does not get to sit down, but but it didn't take all day. No. I was literally over at her house for a, an hour and a half. Now, yeah. keto, it was like, you better have brought your pajamas from the for the night before because there was so much stuff to make. By the time you got to Christmas morning, we were exhausted. Now we can keep the food simple. We enjoy it. And then the rest of the day was about family and we all had energy to enjoy it. No one was napping. Nope. There was no napping, not even the kids because nope. the kids are keto too. No one was exhausted. We watched Wonder Woman 1984 and it was flipping awesome. Like such a great movie. I, w I just enjoyed it. So it was like, yeah, it wasn't just about the food. The best part was is we left and her mom's kitchen was clean. Because in the past, I wish we had a picture of what her mom's kitchen looked like. When we used fancy pre plates. Pre-keto and we had fancy plates. Like she was still doing dishes like a week later. Yes. So to leave there at the end of the night and know that her mom has no cleaning in the kitchen to just do. throw out the paper plates. Most <laughs> of the food was cooked on the Blackstone. Yes. So it was just super easy, super simple. And again, we left... She gets to just enjoy her evening now and not have to worry about cleaning a kitchen and everything else. So that's the best part to me. All of it is, is it a different Christmas? Yes, but it's a better yeah. different Christmas. <laughs> so next one is from Shelly. Hey Shelly, she says, Christmas day is just Heath and I, so making prime rib. The 26th, we're having family over and smoking a turkey. Both sounds delicious. I was going to say, I'm not upset with either of those things. I love prime rib, and a smoked turkey sounds amazing. Prime rib is starting to becoming another, like, go-to, like, holiday thing. Like, keto people, like, let's make a prime rib. Why not? Yeah, so, and also, don't forget, if you're watching this on Monday, today's Meaty Monday. Every Monday, we try to stick carnivore. Put all your food that you're eating, put it on Instagram, Facebook, go hashtag Meeting Monday, and it's in honor of Heath for his battle with MS. Yeah, just lets him know we love him. Next one is from Shell. Hey, Shell. Shell said, LOL, ham, rutabaga, au gratin, keto cheddar biscuits, collard greens, keto candy yams made with kabuka squash. Neat. Squash casserole, keto cheesecake. Normal mac and cheese, candied yams, biscuits, apple pie. As you can see, most stuff everybody eats. Some stuff got to make for the non-keto family. 
I still go spend night at my mom's and my dad's house for Christmas Eve. So uh, do my sister and my nephew. So sweet. I am so glad that you guys are so excited to try geocaching. It's been a great way for us to get out of the house. Yeah, I was looking online and the place that we're going to be going camping has a couple of geocaching things. So I want to definitely go explore that with the boys. Yeah, I think that this will be a really fun activity for us to do and kind of like learn how to do this together. Yeah. So I'm really excited. And I think that that is really cool that you spend the night over at your mom's house, kind of like an opportunity to be a kid again yeah. for Christmas. That's so special. I love that. So next one is from Anne. Hey Anne, she says, we haven't been geocaching in a couple of years. A fun memory, camping in Gettysburg with our grandkids. They had a blast geocaching while learning some history. That must be like... I can't even imagine what it's like there. The pinnacle of, of geocaching. It's, like that's gotta be the coolest place ever. It's Ooh, sorry, funny, charity. I've heard about geocaching, but the only memory I have of it is watching an episode of like Law and Order where they were doing it and it was people were doing it and then committing crimes while they were doing it. Well, so we won't do that. We're not going to do that, but I am definitely looking forward to doing it. Uh, next one is from Melly. Hey, Melly. Uh, Melly said, I'm definitely going to attempt geocaching. So yeah. glad you brought it up. And I've forgotten about. Uh, I had definitely need to get out of the house safely. Yeah, it's a great way, I think, to just like explore your area. You can social distance. It's yep. no problem at all. And feel rewarded, yeah. right? Because when you find these things, like, bonus. Yeah. Let's take one more quick commercial break right here. You can do something with that cat. And then we can come back and finish up the last few comments. Meow. Nope, she's staying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome back. Now we're going to check in with our Facebook comments. And the first one is from Bosco. Hey, Bosco. They say, I was reading and watching a video about drinking banana tea for better sleep. Says it is a low calorie drink. Tried Googling it, but didn't get any information. Has anyone tried this? So actually pre-keto, I used to do the banana drink a lot. That's back when I was doing like going to the CrossFit and stuff and the trainer who I was working with had me doing the banana drink because even then I was not a good sleeper. It definitely worked. And what, what you would do drink? is, you remember, so you take the banana and you cut it up with the peel. You have to, and you have to use organic bananas because you want the peel. Oh, and by yeah. the way, they spray those bananas if you're not getting the organic ones because they try to get them to ripen in the store. And as a matter of fact, you said you used to spray it and watch it ripen like before your eyes, right? Yeah, you definitely do not, like if you see somebody eating banana, like you, they want to like make sure that peel is off yeah. and away from their mouth. So <laughs> what you would do with the bananas is you would actually boil them in water and then drink that water. And it does put you right out. Now, as far as calorie and carb content, I don't know how that's going to equate because you are throwing out all the banana. You're basically boiling it. You're just drinking the but liquid. I'm going to tell you, here's what why it works. It's because of the potassium and the magnesium. So you're getting all of that potassium and the magnesium. So that's going to give you that tiredness and make you fall asleep. You can do the same thing by just using the Keto Chow Magnesium Drops or buying Calm, I'll put a link for it down below. But supplementing with some magnesium is gonna give you the same result and then you don't have to worry about if you're getting any carbs. Did I get the greatest banana too? Yeah, also, it it doesn't taste the greatest. It, it's not, if you think it's gonna taste like eating a banana, it doesn't. It tastes like you boiled a banana peel. It just does put you to sleep. Because you boiled a banana peel. But yeah, it works. We did it for a long time, but I, I honestly I don't know how many now. carbs you're going to get out of it from boiling that banana. I can't remember, like, because, yeah, it was during, like, CrossFit, and you would be like... <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, next one is from Trisha. Hey, Trisha. She said, question for anyone. Has anybody purchased the Deeper State Keto from Keto Savage? If someone has, do you think it is worth the price? So we've actually both done the Deeper State and Keto yes, program. Yes, it's worth it. It is definitely worth it, especially, and we don't make any money off of telling you that, but I will tell you, if you want to learn how to biohack your metabolism, yeah. that is the program to do. Plus, you can get some coaching and you can message with them. And it's forever, so you can go back over and over and over again. But if you, I mean, we'll, once we're done with our 30 day fast in January, 31 day fast, we'll probably be using that to reverse diet back up because we're gonna be going from a lower calorie to a higher calorie. Right. But it's a great way to biohack your metabolism and speed it up and be able to eat more calories. 
and really get in tune with what your protein threshold and what your fat threshold is. So I highly recommend it. Yeah, because there's a lot of different programs that talk about like your relationship with food, but this one really speaks to your body's relationship yeah. with your food. And I will say this, it is the exact program that uh, Robert Keto Savage uses for himself in competition. So he is actually living by the program that he's going on. Like when you look at deeper state keto, when he's trying to cut for you know a competition or trying to bulk up, that's what he's doing. He's doing the deeper state keto program. Like all of the other keto things and like his keto brick, he designed it for himself and then started showing other people how to do it as well. Yeah. So our next one is from Michelle. Hey Michelle, she says, I just wanted to thank all of you for just letting me jump in here so much recently. As a newbie, this is an extremely welcoming community. There's been a lot more stress than normal lately and it has helped me immensely just checking in here every day. I also really enjoyed the lives and the Discord. Thanks Joe and Rachel for setting all of this up. This is a great community. Well, thank you very much for being a part of the community, Michelle. That's yeah. first of all. And again, yeah. I think that we've really worked hard to build a community of people that we like to call our family. That's why we call our Facebook group our family group. Well, and I don't think that we were meant to do life alone. Yeah. I really don't. And and when we're trying to figure out things by ourselves or we're isolating ourselves, and this is definitely, you know, a situation where you're just kind of physically isolated, but we can still be mentally together. We can still communicate. And I think that we need that to mm -hmm. be wholly successful in life. So having this community, having this family of people together where, you know, you can share your, your plans, you can share your successes, you can share like, you know, problems that you're having. It's just really, really important. So thank you for being a part of it because without you, we're missing something. Yeah. Right? So, and you can go join our Facebook group. Um, you can go on our Discord. There's a link for it down below and there's always somebody in there chatting. So if you just need someone like immediately to pick you up, go jump in that Discord and talk to somebody. Um, you can kind of hook up with us over on Instagram. You can watch one of our hundreds of videos. So there's always someone there, but I do want to take this opportunity. Please though, share your stories in our yes. Facebook group whatever you're going through, there's somebody else going through it. So if you go in and then put like, hey, I'm struggling with this, somebody else will be able to come and join you and help you and walk you through it. But also there's somebody else that maybe you struggle with something and now you're not struggling with it. But when you put up like, hey, I overcame this, someone else is like, oh, how did you do that? I'm going through the same thing. Well, and something that came out in the lives is it, is it kind of does every year was people would speak up and say like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of always in the background and I haven't really spoken, but like, I just wanted to say hello. Well, don't, don't be afraid to go ahead and engage with people and just say like, hi, and you know, you might make a new friend and certainly there's somebody that's looking for a friend and maybe you can be that friend and that encouragement to somebody else. Yeah, because I know one of the things that I love about going into the Facebook group, going to Discord, seeing people talking is that so many people within the Two Crazy Ketos community have become friends outside of yes. just watching our videos. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. It's precious. It really, really is. So next one is from Renee. Hey, Renee. She says, I spotted the perfect candle for those seeking the PS5. The PS5 candle smells like you're not getting one. I saw this. Caleb was burning that candle today. And I, I yeah, because Caleb wants a PS5 and Sorry. I want a PS5. And for the last week and a half, you get the teasers. I, I, I'm signed up for all these things that would notify you when someone's get it and stuff. We actually went out to eat. We're sitting in Texas Roadhouse and I get the text message. They were available at that very moment Oops, now it's on gone. PlayStation. So I pick up my phone and now you have to go wait in a virtual queue. And Rachel's like, we are trying to enjoy a meal. And I'm like, I am trying to get my son a PS5. Didn't work. For 45 minutes, sat there, you're in a queue. And then all of a sudden, it comes in, you're in. I'm like, oh yes, I'm gonna get it. Oh, we sold out. But you know it's what? Like, that was such a waste. We we wound up going like some gift card routes. Yes. And ultimately, you know, eventually he'll get one. You yeah. know, after January, usually then all of a sudden th they found a bunch of them. And in the meantime, get them later. He's got gift cards for every one of his favorite restaurants. He's there you got go. gift cards for PlayStation. I mean, he's good. He's good to go into the next year. 
So, okay, we have one more, and it is from Angina. Hey, Lisa. She said, I am so frustrated and kind of upset. Since last night, actually a few days, really, but uh, since last night, it's gotten worse. My blood sugar levels have gone up more than I like. Since I started my fast last night, my blood, highest blood sugar was 107. This morning, 102, and has not gone down since. All I had today was a half a serving of my brunch, which only consisted of eggs, sausage, and spinach, and nothing else. I haven't snacked or eaten anything else since then, not even a drink. I just don't get it. It's really getting me down. Hmm. I've worked so hard to keep my blood sugar levels down so I don't go back to being diabetic, and no matter what I do, how clean I make our meals and snacks, it just keeps creaming up. I am at a loss. So frustrating. Okay, so this is gonna be more frustrating. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it. I need to worry I, I went through this and I Rachel will tell you I went through this and I remember last January we were getting I'm going into like get, uh, Omaha and my blood sugars which were always in the 80s all of a sudden were in the 90s and sometimes the hundred and like I haven't changed anything. There were times where during a fast it was at a hundred. And I talked to Dr. Barry and he was like, you're fine. He was like, your body's going to produce glucose when it needs it. You can be in a fast and have an elevated glucose. Why? Your body is creating glucose. But one of the things that, and again, we are not doctors. I want to state that. No. We're not doctors. We're not nurses. All of the opinions that we're telling you right now are based on our own personal experiences and from talking to people like Dr. Barry or Dr. Sidewis and reading and studying that we've done. But... One of the things that causes an increase in glucose and your body actually making it is stress yeah. and lack of sleep. Yeah. So if you're having some trouble sleeping and you're you, maybe you've got some stress that needs to get worked like out. Like stressing over your glucose. Right. Well, that, yeah, I was going to say it's like feeding into my stress and we've totally been there. Yeah. Try to focus your attention on relaxing as best you can. If there are some things that you can work out of your life, especially going into 2021. Mm -hmm. If there are some things that like we just can't handle, we can't make any forward momentum in those areas, we're going to pray about it, leave it with the Lord, and just move on. Yeah. Because there's some things we can't fix. There's some people we can't fix. There's some work that we can't fix. There's there's just some stuff I can't, There's that I have no control over. Yeah, that is like, people talk about New Year's resolutions, and I'm not really one for resolutions. You know, we go into the new year, we give the beginning of the year to God, and after that, like, I don't say like, this year, I'm going to do this differently, because let's face it, you do the different thing for about seven days, and then like, eh, not worth it. I am sort of making a resolution for myself this year because what I want to try to do is learn how to deal with stress better yeah. and learn how to get better sleep because the increased stress and the increased sleep has resulted in me being like 14 pounds heavier than last year. It's not from overeating. It's not even from over snacking because my snacking isn't much different than it was for the last four years. It's really just the stress and it's amazing what stress and a lack of sleep is going to do for your body. So, you know, I would not worry about it. And honestly, 102 isn't like a soup. That's not even a diabetic blood sugar. So I really wouldn't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Try not to stress out about it. And you'd be surprised at like how it'll just take care of itself. Yeah. And I mean, it's a goal for me going to 2021 also is like we have got to handle our stress. We've got to examine it and see where can we find more peace in our life and joy and enjoy this journey because how frustrating is it when the stress starts to steal from us all of the forward momentum that we're doing. So like you're putting in all of this hard work and all of this effort into getting healthy and and not if I ignore the stress, it's just going to rob me. Yeah. I don't want it to rob me mm -hmm. of my peace and my success. Yeah. So... Well, that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch, the last Keto on the Couch for 2020. Make sure you join us on New Year's Eve at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our weekly live stream, which happens to be New Year's Eve. You can get ready to ring in the new year with us. 
Also, let us know down in the comment section, what are your New Year's Eve, New Year's Day plans? Exactly. So now, if you like seeing videos like this, make sure you check out some of our other Keto on the Couches. There are 93 other episodes, wow. which are all linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can find right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.